Oh, come on, lift your hands all over this house tonight. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Come on, if you came expecting to receive something great from God. Come on, every hand lifted. Father, we thank you tonight for your mighty power, your anointing that's in this place. I thank you, Lord. We're not going to leave here the same way we came in. We're leaving with an impartation. This is our night of breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I thank you right now. Every attack that was launched against your people, it comes to an end tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Every wicked force that the devil tried to use to harass our families, it is cut off tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare we receive our breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. And if that's you, clap those hands and give Jesus a shout of praise all over this house. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Well, before you sit down, why don't you greet two or three people and just welcome them into this final night of revival. Praise God. We're glad you're here. Welcome everybody watching online. So glad you're watching with us. Stay tuned. Got something good for you tonight. You're going to receive your touch from God. Amen. Praise God. I said praise God. And worship team, don't, don't go too far. I mean, you can sit down for a minute if you want to, but I'm telling you, how many appreciate this awesome worship team? Aren't they doing so good? Sang a bunch of my favorite songs tonight, and I didn't even put any requests in. Praise God. I love that song, You Have No Rival. That bridge, you have no rival, no equal. Now and forever, he reigns. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I said he reigns. Somebody shout, he reigns forever. Yes, he does. And um, let me ask this question tonight. Uh, who is it that this is your very first night in revival this week? Would you lift your hand and let us see it? Would you put your hands together and welcome every one of them? Thank you for being with us. We're glad you're here. So glad you're here. And uh, tonight's going to be a great night. I'm very, very happy. What God's done this week has been supernatural. And uh, I want to take a minute just to honor Pastors Jeremy and Crystal Hyde and Encounter Church of God. Would you put your hands together for these wonderful pastors? Man and woman of faith, come on, give them some honor tonight. The Bible says give honor where honor is due. Aren't you thankful? I'm very thankful. And for those of you that this is your home church, you ought to thank God to have a church that's full of the Holy Ghost that will not compromise or bow their knee to the spirit of this world. You know, it's so wonderful to have a church like that to attend because, you know, it's not everywhere. But when you find a place where the fire of God is moving, plug in and get connected and stay faithful. Because, you know, there's a Bible prophecy. Actually, multiple Bible prophecies, one from Jesus, one from Paul regarding this. The Bible says in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. Isn't that right? So there we'll see a group of people that used to love God with all their heart. They used to be on fire. But something happens because of the spirit of the age that causes their heart to begin to grow cold. You know, it's like I heard a preacher telling a story. He said uh, a husband and wife were driving down the interstate in their vehicle. Husband was driving. He was on one side of the car. And uh, the wife was over sitting against the wall the other side. And she looked over at him and she said, you know, when we first got married, we used to go down the road hugged up with one another. I mean, just cuddling all the way down the road. And she was kind of sticking it to him, you know. And he's looking at the steering wheel. He said, well, girl, I'm still in the same place. <laughs> As if to say, if anybody moved, you moved. And that's how it is in the body of Christ. If anybody's love has grown cold, God's still in the same place he's always been. Jesus is still driving the ship. And I made up my mind, I refuse to let my heart grow cold. I refuse to come away from my first love, which is Christ. In fact, while others are getting colder, I'm getting hotter in Jesus' name. Is that your story? I'm getting hotter. And so there are Bible prophecies concerning these things, but we know this. 
that we're going to be that remnant in the final moments of time that others might grow cold, others might fall away from the faith, but we're getting more and more invested in what God's doing in the earth. Can you say amen to that? And so I'm telling you, this has been a wonderful week. So many uh, miracle testimonies. It's absolutely been wonderful. And um, I wondered, Miss Ellen, would you come and just quickly just share what God did for you? This is Miss Ellen. She came the other night, and uh, if you heard me asking for somebody to bring snacks to the altar, it was her fault. I was saying, some people are like, why is pastor asking for snacks at the altar? Well, God did a work in her, and uh, just, it was a few years ago, really, I think you had lost your sense of smell, and that was around 2020 or so. And then uh, a couple years after that, the taste went. But tell them what happened. Okay. Well, my taste went uh, in... January, I had COVID, and um, I had lost my taste, but I had already lost the smell two years before that. So anyway, um, we came in, and he prayed over me, and the next day, I was making my tea, and I, you know, wasn't even thinking anything about it, and as you steep the tea, I put a plate over top of the tea, and when I took the plate off, the smell of the blackberry hit me in the face. And I'm like, what? What? Wait! I can smell my tea. Amen. And so I was. I had. I had something with dinner. I could taste my dinner. I, I had salad that day. I could taste all the ingredients to the salad. Yep. It was just amazing to me. Yes, and it was. You remember? I remember it. <laughs> and I, I had to text him. I said, I am just so excited because the Lord has healed my smell. And it's been ever since then. It's like when I drink something, I can smell it. It's like. This is just, it's unbelievable. Praise it's amazing God. what the Lord has done. Amen. So thank you. Praise God. We love you. Thank you. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I don't know, how, do we have any of our family here from New Life Ministries over in Colonial Beach? Would you put your hands together for them? I can't see with all the lights, but is our brother here tonight who God healed his uh, lungs while he was working in the lobby, working security and, and uh Usher, would you come quickly? I want you to just share that. I, you, you tricked me. They were over there, and you're on the left. It's, an, it's the art of misdirection. Um, but this was an awesome testimony because I didn't even get a chance to lay hands on you. You were just being faithful, working as an usher and a security man in the lobby. Come on over. And uh, what a powerful testimony this is. You got attacked when COVID hit. And how long were you in the ICU? Nine weeks in the ICU, unconscious. Three weeks in a rehab hospital here in Fredericksburg, and then a couple of months of rehab at the house. And so it hit you hard, and your lungs were getting torn up, and the doctors told you with all the scar tissue and everything, uh, your lung capacity, what, what, what did they tell you? Well, they told me, they told me a lot of things, <laughs> contrary to what Jesus told me. Right. Um, they told me that I would never leave the hospital without a bottle of oxygen attached to me, and I did. I walked out of there without that. Um, afterwards, they, they told me that I was about 40% lung function and capacity. And they told me that I would be a candidate for double lung transplant at 38 years old. And so they said, oh, because of the scar tissue, only 40% of your lung capacity was functioning. That's right. Only 40% was functioning, and they said it would never get better, that scars don't go away, just like on your skin that scarring would never come out. And so we were two weeks ago holding revival over in Colonial Beach, Pastor Denise Marth, powerful woman of God. And uh, in the middle of that, you were working in the lobby, and we were, we were praying for people at the altar, but it felt like something come out and hit you while we were at the altar. What happened? Oh, it was Jesus' overflow. It was so good. Actually, I got two healings. I don't know if you remember. The first one was sitting in the hallway doing security, and I had actually severe back pain. And I was moving from a chair to a stool back and forth, trying to find comfort. I got up off the stool to go to the chair and realized there was no pain after you were praying for somebody about back pain in the sanctuary. So I had prayed for somebody who had back pain at the altar, but that same anointing that healed them jumped out and healed you. The ricochet and overflow. That's right. That's what we said in the revival. We said miracles are ricocheting in this place. And, uh, and then the second one. The second one was a day or two later I was sitting in the sanctuary, sitting in the sanctuary back left corner, and you were praying for people at the altar, and Jesus was coming down, touching their lungs, 
And I didn't hear what the prayers were about, but I could feel something was different. And at that time, my wife even noticed me continuing these deep breaths that I hadn't experienced in over three years now. Praise God. So, hallelujah. So in one moment, I mean, look what God can do in one moment. We serve a miracle working God. Would you put your hands together? Thank you. Would you put your hands together and just give Jesus praise? He's a miracle working God. Amen. He gets all the glory. I said he gets all the glory. He gets all the honor. He gets all the praise. He's the healer. Can you say amen to that? And I tell you, we've had wonderful things. I don't know how many people this week, at least six, five or six people that uh, were either hard of hearing, hearing aids, deaf, tinnitus, healed by the power of God, ears opened up. And I'm telling you, I'm just getting excited for on, on your behalf. Amen. And it's just wonderful to watch God do what only he can do. He does what only he can do. And the reason, and I'm, that's why I was giving honor to your pastors, because it's the wisdom that they have to understand that we need these kinds of meetings in the final moments of time. Do you know, the Bible actually gives us a hint that as we get closer to the return of Christ, well, we know, as I just said, that the heart of many people would grow cold or their love would grow cold, which means that the disciplines they had in their Christian life would start to wane or drop off, if you will. And then we get this kind of a hint that people will stop wanting to meet together like they used to meet together to worship Jesus. So the writer of Hebrews actually gives us a command in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, and he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, as is the custom of some, but... As you see the day of the Lord approaching, gather all the more. Amen. So as we look, I know there's a lot of churches around this nation, even in this state and probably in this uh, this actual county, that they've gone down to all they do is Sunday morning and that's it. But I'm telling you, it's the wisdom of pastors like yours who understand, yes, we do Sunday morning. Yes, we have groups. Yes, we do other things. But we also need revival services because we're not going to gather less as Jesus is coming. We're going to gather more as Jesus is coming. And I mean, look around this room tonight. Listen, now this is a Friday night when most people go out, hang out, go to the movies, go to the restaurant, hang with their family. And this is the biggest crowd we've had all week long in this revival. And I'm telling you, it's a sign unto you that people are hungry for the mighty move of God. And I'm telling you, we're not going to be in revival. We're in revival right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. If you're thankful for it, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And so it's wonderful to see what God will do as we just set our faith. You know, God meets us at our point of faith. Christ meets us at our point of faith. In fact, the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, that without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. And those that come to God must believe that, number one, he exists and what? That he's a rewarder of those who, oh, that's an important word right there, who diligently seek him. You know, there's a difference between casual seeking and diligent seeking. You know, if you were over at your buddy's house and you're sitting on the couch watching a game and the game comes to an end and you get in your car, you're headed home and you're about halfway home and you realize, hang on a second, I had three quarters in my pocket. They must have fallen out on the couch when I was sitting there watching the game. Well, you might be 15, 20 minutes down the road. You're not going to swing that car back around and drive 20 minutes to go back and find those three quarters that fell in the couch. But if you had three $100 bills in your pocket, and you're like, hold on, I think that fell out in the couch. That car's getting turned around. We're headed right back. And you're going to tear them cushions apart. You're going to look underneath the couch till you find them. You know, there's a difference between how you'd look for three quarters and how you'd look for three $100 bills. It went from casual seeking to what? Diligent seeking. The reason is the value that you placed on what was lost. Oh, hallelujah. It's the value that you placed 
on what was lost. And let me tell you, when you've got, and I'm looking across the crowd, many of the faces I see here tonight, you've been in every night of revival, and I honor you for that because that means you're diligently seeking God, coming after him with your whole heart. Well, you know what your promise is, don't you? He's going to reward those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. And I'm just telling you, that's what we're going to experience, the power of God. We're blessed tonight because we get to have some of the students from my cousin's Bible school in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Revival Today Bible Institute. Would you stand if you're from that school and let's put our hands together and welcome every student that came from Revival Today Bible Institute. And um, I want to say this to you because I love my cousin and, of course, I love... uh, you know, my family's just, all of my family's doing something for God. My grandfather pastored for 62 years. He's in heaven. My grandmother just went to heaven just this last year. And um, they had four sons that are all still preaching the gospel today. They gave them all T names, Ted, Tim, Tiff, and Terry. And every single one of their children is preaching the gospel tonight. And there's somewhere, I think, close to 18 Shuttlesworths that are preaching the gospel right now somewhere in the world. And tonight, holding revivals in different places. And um, it's amazing to watch how God moves in your family. And it's amazing because, you know, my grandfather was a rough dude. You know, he was from West Virginia. His family was all coal miners. They went into World War II, came back, just, you know, alcoholic, fighting, drinking, you know, running moonshine through the hills. Nobody ever thought he'd even be a Christian, let alone a preacher. (laughs) Back then, the church met in a one-room schoolhouse with a potbelly stove in the middle, and my granddad get up on the roof in the winter and stuff blankets in the chimney and smoke all the Christians out of the church. He was just ornery, you know, and he was wild. But then God got a hold of him, and he called him to preach. And he went to Bible school, met my grandmother, who was a potato farmer from northern Maine. And when they got together, they began in ministry. And he made a vow to God. He said, Lord, if you'll keep my boys from the spirit of this world, I'll preach your gospel for the rest of my life. And not only did he keep the sons, but the grandsons and now the great-grandchildren. And the blessing of the Lord can flow through your family. Can you say amen? And, um, you know, we talk about diligent seeking. I, I wanted to, I'm going to put Grace on the spot tonight for a minute, but come here, Grace. Um, this is Grace. She's one of the students from the school. But I wanted to just say this because, I don't know, I mean, you've been in a bunch of the services this week. I mean, we could probably count the ones it's easier to count the ones you weren't in than the ones you were in. Only missed Tuesday night. Now, this school is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which means that she and these students are driving five and a half hours one way, and then tonight when the service is over, they'll drive five and a half hours back to get back to Pittsburgh. She did that every night except one night. And uh, I'm talking about a hunger for the moving of the Holy Spirit. And so I want, yeah, amen. It's a blessing. And so I just wanted you to take, you know, 30 seconds or whatever you, whatever you want to take, but just kind of talk about that because, you know, there's a lot of people that would tell us that the next generation is not hungry for God and that Gen Z doesn't care and, you know, all this stuff, Gen Y doesn't care and, you know, they're all leaving church. But I'm telling you, there's an army being raised up right now of people that are on fire, that won't compromise, that won't bow their knee to the spirit of this world. And we're going to see our generation turned upside down by the power of God. Can you say amen? But I just wanted, to, wanted you to talk about, you know, what revival has meant to you, how it's impacted you, and what you're seeing even in your generation. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely I think something that, um, that the world gets wrong, and like you are just saying, is that our, hung, our generation is not hungry for a move of God. And that's actually quite a lie. Our generation can tell the difference between the genuine and the fake. And our, ge- and our generation wants the real thing. And the thing that we've been experiencing here in revival is the real thing. You can't fake miracles. You can't fake the word of God. When the word of God is preached, he shows up to um, perform it and he shows up to confirm it. And something that I've experienced this week myself personally is, um, you know, and Pastor Carolyn always says this, you know, um, that scripture where it's like the kingdom of heaven is not eating and drinking, but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I've experienced a joy coming here. I've experienced a supernatural peace in my mind that you can only get when you're in the presence of God. And it's it's worth the drive. If there's anything like, you know, they get it too. Like people our age are like, they're 
out right now partying. I'm like, guys, if we can pull an all-nighter to do homework, if people can pull an all-nighter to go to the club and party or whatever, we can pull an all-nighter to get in the presence of God and receive something from him. And that will change us forever. So, yeah, that's what it's, that's what it's done for me this week, and it's only going to get better. Amen. Amen. Would you just give God praise for every faithful young person? <laughs> praise God. And I'm telling you, even here at the church and what, uh, you know, Josiah's doing with the young people, I'm telling you, there's an army being raised up all over America, and we're going to see a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. I'm just saying it over and over. The devil can't have our young people in Jesus' name. The devil cannot have our students in Jesus' name. Your grandchildren will be blessed. Your children will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout aloud, amen. Amen. And so we're blessed. I can't believe it's already the final night. It, it, time flies, man. When you're having a good time in the Holy Ghost, it flies. And uh, I'll just tell you, but if I don't get a chance to say it at the end of this service, I love you so much. And I've been so honored to preach to you this week. I know tonight's going to be a mighty move of the Spirit. But I know once we get into this, you know, everything God does. So if I don't get a chance to tell you at the end, let me tell you now, I love every one of you. And I've been honored to stand here and minister to you. You're some easy people to preach to, I can tell you that. Nobody's sitting back, I don't believe it. You know, we don't have any of that. I've not had one tomato thrown at me this week. No vegetables. It's been wonderful. And uh, I mean that. It's just, you're an easy people to preach to, happy people, kind people. And I know the blessing of the Lord's just beginning on your life. The best days are ahead. Can you say that? The best days are ahead. Praise God. Somebody say, my best days are ahead. I want to show you something to stir your faith. 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, I'm going to have this band sing one more time as we give our offerings tonight because I'm taking the end of this service to minister to every one of you. Is this the second crop of RTBI students that just came in and beat the traffic? My goodness, come on up, guys. Here's the second crop. They found, they found some traffic somewhere in the five-and-a-half-hour drive. They're still coming. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else we're waiting on? Is this, gonna, this is everybody? Praise the Lord. I'm glad. You know, that, mean, that means so much to me. People that are willing to do an 11-hour drive in one day to be in the presence of God. Yeah. Makes me excited. Praise God. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. I want you to look at verse 8. This is such an amazing and powerful story, what God did for this woman and her family. Here's a woman that she was already wealthy. This is a woman who was already had a, a reputation. The king knew who she was. Everybody knew who she was. And uh, she was already influential. But the Bible says in 2 Kings 4 and verse 8, One day, Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. I'm sure she didn't have to urge him too hard. <laughs> That's what happens. You, get the man of, you don't feed the man of God too well. He'll stay forever. Amen. I'm going to get a small apartment in the back of this church. They've been feeding us every night. That's how you know the pastor's a good man. I've gained like 10 pounds since I've been here. Praise God. Um, the Bible says, so whenever he passed that way, he'd turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, behold now, I know this is a holy man of God who's continually passing our way. Let's make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. <laughs> and I love this because it just actually goes to the next verse, and the thing's already built, which shows you pr she probably pretty much ran the house. Her husband had nothing to say. She said, we're building a place. He said, sounds good to me. And verse 11, one day after the prophet came there, he turned into the chamber. See, it's already built. And rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. And he called her. And she stood before him, and he asked to him, Say now to her, you've taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Everybody say, for me. First thing I want you to see, God never expects you to do anything for him without him doing something for you. Let me say that again. God never expects you to do anything for him without him doing something for you. 
That's actually what the covenant is. A covenant, people hold their Bible up and they say, this is a book of promises. It's not a book of promises. It's a book of covenants. And a covenant is different than a promise. A promise is one-sided, but a covenant is two-sided. A promise would be this. This coming uh, Monday, I'm going to be at your house at 11 a.m. to cut your grass. That's a promise because it says no matter where you are, no matter what you do, you could be on vacation. But if my word is good, then when I show up on Monday, I'm going to cut that grass. And that's a promise. But a covenant says if you'll pay me $30, then this coming Monday I'll be at your house to cut your grass. Well, if you don't pay the 30 I'm not required to show up and cut the grass. But if I don't show up and cut the grass, you're not required to pay the 30. Because we each have a part to fulfill our covenant contract. And when you read the Bible, God was always using covenant contract language with his people. He never expected you to do things for the kingdom without him doing something greater for you. Look, for example, in the Old Testament, at Psalm 84 and verse 11, the Bible says, The Lord our God is a sun and a shield, and he bestows favor and honor, and he will not withhold any good thing from those that what? Walk uprightly. That means, he said, if you'll walk uprightly, if you'll walk in holiness, if you'll walk according to my word, then here's my part. I won't withhold any good thing from your life. I'll make sure I pour out so many good things on your life that people who are all around you that don't even know you're a Christian will see my goodness manifested in your life, and it'll be evident that you've got a connection to a supernatural being. The Bible says in Psalm 1, Verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who does not stand in the way of the wicked or sit in the seat of the scornful or stand in the the place of mockers but delights himself in the law of the Lord and meditates upon it day and night. The Bible says that kind of a person will be like a tree planted by streams of water that bears fruit in his season and his leaves will never wither. And in all that he does, he will prosper. Amen. That's what God's saying. If you'll do your part, I'll do my part. Well, New Testament, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be what? Added unto you. It's God saying, if you'll do your part, I'll do my part. Isaiah 119, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat what? The good of the land. The good of the land. Say, what's the good of the land look like? You can eat and just survive in the land, or you can eat the best. You know, when I was in Bible school, I told you the other night, I gained 40 pounds in Bible school because my mom was too good to me. I left, I sent her a text the other day. I did some math on my phone, and then I shot my mom a text. I said, Mom, thank you for making my first 19,700 meals before I left home. And they were good ones too. And, but she was so good to me that by the time I went to Bible school, I didn't know how to cook anything. She had taken care of me. She was a good mother. She took care of me. I had to figure it out on my own by the time I got there. You'd be surprised what Bible school students don't know how to do. There was a girl in my Bible school that called her mom. was like, Mom, how do you boil water? That's a true story. How do you boil water, Mom? And, uh, and so I got out there. Well, I did what every bachelor does. I went to the frozen food section and picked up some Tombstone Four Meats pizzas. Got some of that. Uh, you ever seen those steakums? I grabbed me some steakums. It looked good on the box, man. It looked real good on the box. I found if you're not familiar with steakums, it's a cardboard-like product that you throw into a pan. And by the time you've cooked it, you can eat it. It looks semi-like steak filled with sodium. You pucker up like a raisin after you've eaten it. You need 19 gallons of water not to die. And uh, I ate those steakums. I'm thinking, my God, this is it different? But I ate it. And uh, you know how it is as a college student. You order three pizzas from Papa John's on Friday, and then it stays on the table for the whole week. You take a piece before class in the morning every day. No, that, that bacteria is good for you. And so <laughs> makes you tough. Hallelujah. Gets you ready for missionary work overseas. Hallelujah. And so, you know, I didn't know how to make anything. And then I remember leaving, and I was with my father after Bible school, and we were with R.W. Shambach. He did this huge crusade under the tent in Dallas, and then afterwards, 
you know, he said, you know, I want to be a blessing to all the crew that helped me do this tent meeting. So he took all the preachers, my, fa my father and my family and all the workers that worked for him and took us to that steakhouse, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. I'd never been to one of those before, and so I didn't know what it was like. I sat down at the table, and I, I was just used to going to something. You got a meal, you know what I mean? You don't get a meal when you order those places. If you order steak, that's what you get, steak. You get a plate and steak. That's all you get. You got to order the side separately. I didn't know what a la carte meant at the time. I said, uh, you know, but you, you want to look cultured in those places. You don't want to look like you don't belong, even though I grew up in West Virginia in a coal mining town. So they came. They said, what would you? You never notice that? The, the, the waiters just look at you like you don't even belong there. What would you like? And I, I got this. I looked at the menu. I said, let me get the filet mignon. That's what I want. <laughs> let me get that. I fit right in in this spot. Hallelujah. Don't bring me the six Oz. Bring me the eight Oz. And so... <laughs> <laughs> and so here comes, here comes my steak. Well, it comes out, and it's just meat and a plate. That's all I had. He said, how would you like it? I said, let me get it medium rare. You know, I'd heard people order medium rare. And so I ordered, and I mean, that thing came out, and I sliced through it. It was like butter. And I looked, I put that in my mouth. I felt like the Hebrews in the wilderness. I said, manna. You know, that, did you know that's what the word manna means in Hebrew? It means, what is this? They ate that bread God sent from heaven. Man, what is this? Never had anything that good before. I felt that way. I tasted that steak at Ruth's Chris. I was like, my God, it's the best thing I've ever had. It snapped, it snapped my mind back to that steakums in my apartment at Bible school. And I thought, buddy, that ain't steak. This is steak right here. This is steak. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know, you could get by eating that steakums. You can get up and cook that every day and make that and eat it for yourself. He said, or you can come and you can have a filet mignon cooked just like this. He said, there's a difference. He said, that's something you could eat in the land. He said, but this is the good of the land. He said, if you're willing and obedient, I'll not make you scrape by and get what everybody else gets. He said, I'll make sure you eat the good of the land. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Can you say amen? Oh, yeah, it's through the whole Bible. Did you know Job 36, 11, God is speaking. He said, if they will only obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Hallelujah. So what God is saying through the whole Bible, from the beginning all the way through the New Testament, if you'll do your part, I'll do my part. Hallelujah. I said that because here's this woman. She decides to build an entire apartment for the prophet on top of her house so that he can have outside access and rest himself as he's traveling. But notice what he said. Now that you've done this and gone to all this trouble, what can we do for you? And he said, you know, what, what does she need? Well, the servant says she's already wealthy. Well, can we put in a word for her to the commander of the army? He said, nope. She said, I dwell among my own people. I've got influence. All right, verse 14. Then what's to be done for her? He said, listen, she can't have children. He said, all right. Well, here's your word then. He said, at this season next year, you shall embrace a son. She said, oh, Lord, man of God, don't lie to your servant. He said, yes, you will. And the woman conceived, and she bore a son about the same time the following spring as Elisha had said. So everybody say, number one. Her seed made the impossible possible. When she decided to connect herself with the kingdom of God, it made the impossible possible. What no man could do for her, what no doctor could do for her, the Lord was able to do for her. Amen. But then you know the story. The son, as he grows up, is out working in the field and shouts out, my head, my head, and he falls down dead in the field. You know what she did? She picked that boy up. And she walked him back to her house, walked up those stairs, and put him on the prophet's bed. Man, look where she was standing, inside her seed, inside the things she had already sown into the kingdom. There was miracles for her inside her seed. And she laid his body out on the bed. Notice she didn't jump on Facebook and say, I need the prayer warriors to pray for me. My son's really going. No. She said, I'm going to get the man of God, and I'm going to get a miracle for my son. 
Notice, her, her husband was one of them religious guys. He only goes Christmas and Easter to church. He said, why are you going to see the man of God? It's not new moon or Sabbath. <laughs> yeah, I only go on Christmas and Easter. What are you going to church for? She said, no, I'm going to go and get this miracle. And along the way, she had opportunity to change her confession. People asked her, how you doing? How things going? Oh, just keep us in prayer. It's been a rough quarter. Hallelujah. But we're believing God. No. She said, it is well. Glory to God. It is well. Hallelujah. I said, it is well. And she got to the man of God. And you know she was persistent. She said, you need to come back and you need to t lay hands on this boy, touch this boy. Death is not his story. So the prophet came back, got up in that room, stretched himself out over that boy, and the boy sneezed and came back to life. The second blessing she got is that her seed put her in a place that brought a stop to every loss in her life. It brought a stop to losses. Somebody shout, a stop to losses. The devil doesn't have the right to harass your family. He doesn't have the right to harass your children. He doesn't have the right to come against your mind or body or even your finances. And I'm telling you, get your expectations set that 2024 is going to be a year that God puts a stop to losses in your family and in your life. Shout aloud, amen. Put a stop to losses. Then the prophet gave her the third blessing came and talked to her and said, now listen, there's a famine coming to this land. You need to get out and go somewhere where there's going to be provision. Oh, hallelujah. Third blessing is that she got a leading by the Spirit for her future. She got a leading from the Spirit for her future. You know the Lord will speak to you about things to do in your life. He'll tell you which way to go. He'll tell you. How that you did you know there's actually a verse in the Bible, Isaiah 48 17. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord your God, the Holy One, the Redeemer of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. So when you get led in the way you should go, it brings you to a place of profit. God does not take you into decrease. God doesn't take you into place to destroy you. He doesn't take you down. He takes you higher and higher. He told his people in Deuteronomy 28, if you'll be careful to obey all that I tell you to do today, then I will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. He said you'll lend to many and you'll not borrow. You'll always be the head. You'll not be the tail. You'll only go up and you'll never go down. He said your enemies will come out against you from one direction, but they'll scatter from you in seven directions. What was the whole point here? He said if you'll just hearken to my word and do what I'm commanding you to do, then I'll be the one that takes you into a place where you only go up and you don't go down. If you believe that's going to be your story too, somebody give God praise. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're a kid. My daughter, Brooklyn, she was, got touched by God in a revival. This a couple years ago, she's just a little girl. And she got touched. She's laughing under the power of the Holy Ghost. She's crying. She's laughing. She's crying. She's laughing. Now she's laughing. Now she's crying. Both at once. And she got touched by the power of God. Went back to her seat. She pulls one of the church envelopes out. How old was she at the time? Seven. Seven years old. Eight years old. Pulls one. No one told her to do this. She pulled a church envelope out. She opened up her little purse, and she pulled out cash. I was like, man, we're going to do an audit when we get home. Where would all this money come from? She pulled out, and she put in that envelope $232 and change, and emptied her purse and gave God an offering. Now, that's the heart of a child. God just touched me. I'm going to sow a seed into the kingdom of God. With no instruction, sowed that seed. Well, she told us what she did afterwards. You know, as a good father, you want to be the one that's like, man, I want my daughter to know that when you give to God like that, I'm, I'm tempted to just bless her back just so she knows God's pleased. That's the way we live. And we heard the Lord tell us, my wife and I, don't do anything. Let me bless her. Let me be the one that brings increase to her. So we didn't do anything. So the next night, somebody came up to our little Brooklyn in, in the church service and said, hey, Brooklyn, 
my husband and I were talking about it, and we felt to bless you. She said, thanks. And they handed her an envelope that was stuffed with something. She put that in her little backpack, <laughs> carried it around all night. We got back to the hotel. She said, Dad, I got blessed. And she pulls this envelope out. Somebody bless me. I said, oh, my goodness. I said, you want me to help you count it? She said, yeah. So I opened it up. It was a stack of 20s. So we start counting it, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, then 200, then 300, then 400, then 500. Then six. And when I got to six or 700, my son, who was lot watching his iPad with his Spider-Man headphones, then headphones came off when he heard 700. He's looking around. Brooklyn's getting excited. 800, 900. They had given my little girl $1,000 in that envelope. Teddy's getting excited now, too. His faith jumped up. <laughs> I always tell on him because he was back then believing for a PS5. He said, my sister's rich. She's going to buy me a PS5. That was a lot of faith coming out of his mouth right there. And she's getting excited. He's getting excited. See, God doesn't wait till you're 18 or 21 or 40 years old for he'll bless you for your obedience. My daughter was only seven or eight years old. But the Bible's true, no matter how old you are, that if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Somebody shout amen. amen. So she got a word about her future. Got a word, get out of your land, a famine's coming. So she left. That's blessing number three. But God was not done. Blessing number four, the final one. If you jump over to 2 Kings 8, four chapters later, she's coming back. The famine is over. So she's coming back into her own land. And she wants to approach the king and see if she can get her old property back. So she goes into the king's court, and she's going in to ask him, and when she walks in, the king's talking to Elisha's servant. And the king had just asked, hey, tell me some of those stories that your prophet used to do. Tell me the miracle stories. He said, man, there was this one time, there's a woman who couldn't have children. And God touched her. And the next year she had a son. The son dies. And it gets resurrected by the prophet. And as her testimony's being told, she walks in the door. Hallelujah. That is not a coincidence. As she's having her testimony shared, she walks in the door. The servant goes, here's the woman right here. The king says, bring her over here. You the woman? He said, yeah. She said, yeah, I'm, I'm the woman. Look at this. The Bible says, the king says to her, here's what I want you to do for this woman. Number one, restore all the property that was hers before she left. So she gets all her property restored. But the king says, I'm not done yet. I know she's been gone seven years. But I want you to pay the woman for every year of crops that she would have grown on her land. Pay her for every year she was gone. God didn't just restore what was hers that was lost. But blessed her above and beyond what she could have gotten even with her own words. And what I'm telling you tonight is that when you sow seed into the kingdom of God, it unlocks the supernatural in your life. That there's not one thing that the spirit of this world can do to destroy God's people. It cannot take you out. I don't care if they prophesy a recession from the White House. I don't care if they get up and give you every piece of bad news. You can say that might be the world's story, but that's not my story because I'm connected to the kingdom of God and my God is a provider and he's more than enough. Somebody shout more than enough. Oh yeah, he's a God of more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. He's a God of more than enough. Let me, let me tell you this before we get, because this, this blessed me. You know, I just told you about my grandmother and grandfather. If you've never heard me tell this, this always makes me laugh. They were in a time where they were kind of really starting out in ministry and the churches weren't really paying them that well. My grandfather had my grandmother in the house, four sons in the house, and his mother-in-law lived with them as well. And my grandmother, they didn't have much to eat in the cupboards. There was like almost nothing left. She told me this story. She said, I was standing at the sink in the kitchen, looking out the window and praying to God, Lord, we need provision. I got to feed these boys. I got to take care of my husband. We got nothing in the cupboards and we got no paycheck. I need you to bless our family. And my grandmother said, as she's praying that prayer, 
she looks out the window. There was a farmer who lived up above them, above the parsonage. And she said, down the hill came a line of chickens. And she said they were just single line file, came walking down the hill. She said they came right into our yard, and we had a little shed on the property. She said those chickens walked right in the shed and stayed in there. And she said after a little while, they came out and single file walked right back up the hill to the farmer's house. She said, what in the world is going on? She came out, and she walks into the shed. They had laid a pile of eggs in the shed. And she said, well, we're not thieves. She said, put all those eggs in a basket. And she told my grandfather when he got home, take those back up to the farmer. Those are his chickens. Give him his eggs. And so my grandfather went to the farmhouse and knocked on the door. And when he answered, he said, hey, I had this for you. He said, what do you mean, Reverend? He said, uh, your chickens came down the hill today, laid all these eggs in the shed. He said, my chickens did that? He said, yeah. He said, I don't think so. He said, we can't get those chickens to lay. He said, we've done everything we can think of. He said, they won't lay. We can't get them to lay. He said, I'll tell you what. If they came down to your shed and laid them, they're your eggs. So he took them right back down. Hallelujah. And God provided. They told me. That the, as long as they lived in that parsonage, there were a few more times those chickens would just march down the hill, I think by God's command, and go right into that shed and lay those eggs. You know why? Because God knows how to provide for those that are his. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I just want to encourage you tonight. Even if the devil told you you're not going to make it, the devil is a liar. And God's got blessings set aside for your family. I don't care if he's got to send chickens to you. I don't care if he's got to send ravens with Big Macs in their mouth to bless your family. You're going to be blessed and not cursed in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give Jesus the glory tonight. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so in a moment, we're going we're gonna to sow because here, here's the deal. I want to see God bless you so abundantly. You know what my prayer is? God's raising up pillars of generosity in the kingdom. So let's say, let's say the day came that pastor said, you know what? we got to build a brand new sanctuary that seats 1,000 over here. That It wouldn't be a 20-year building campaign. You wouldn't have to have poster board with a thermometer you color in with a red marker every time somebody gives $100. No. No, somebody will stand up and say, Pastor, just tell me how much it's going to cost. I'm going to write one check right now. Because God's raising up pillars of generosity in the kingdom. That though the devil wants to push back on what God's doing in the final moments of time, God's going to bless his church in such a way that there's not one hindrance that can stand in our path. We're going to see this gospel preached to the ends of the earth, and then the end will come. Amen. And let me tell you, when you stand with this ministry, you've seen it this week, you understand not only will souls come into the kingdom, not only are people being healed, people are being delivered by the power of God, but lives are being totally turned around, families restored. We're going to see this nation shaken one more time before Jesus comes. And you're a part of that. I said, you're a part of that. I said, you're a part of that. We're a soul-winning army in Jesus' name. I said, we're a soul-winning army in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to do some of the biggest things. This year, doors are opening, places we've never gone before. And I'm telling you, I made up my mind. I want to do what Jesus did and destroy the works of the devil. I don't, I'm so sick of seeing the devil mess with our loved ones. I'm sick of opioid epidemics. I'm sick of mental health crisis. I'm sick of people being torn up from the inside out. We're done with that. Devil, this far and no further, we're taking dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as you sow seed, that's what's going towards. You're seeing this nation changed by the power of God. And I'll tell you, we're, we're excited because we're not just doing it all over this nation. But we're raising up an army in West Palm Beach, Florida, the army of on-fire believers. And do you know God so quickly opened the door for us that we said, you know, when I was here last time, it was the first week. I preached my first week of my own church, and then we flew here to start this revival. Now, coming up next week, we're going to celebrate our one-year anniversary as a church in West Palm Beach. Amen. And can I tell you something awesome? Most people, it takes them a long time before they get out of a school or a ballroom or whatever. When we launched last year, shortly after, God gave us 
a space, a beautiful space, over 16,000 square feet, right in the main drag by 95 and US 1. We're right in the middle, 1,100 parking spaces. You have to turn in from the main drag on US 1. God opened up a space, answered every prayer for a location we had. And can I tell you, though the city tried to drag their feet and it seemed like it was taking forever, we got everything we need in our hands and we're now moving forward quickly to finish the build out of that space that we're getting ready to move into by the power of the Holy Ghost. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you this real quick. We took all of our church people uh, and some partners that had come in from out of town over to the space while it was still just after demolition. I said, I'm going to go in there, we're going to have a prayer meeting, and we're going to not only pray, I handed everybody a Sharpie marker. I said, go around this space, do it on the cement floor, on the drywall, write what you're believing God's going to do in this building. Write. You believe families are going to be restored? Write it. People are going to be healed? Write it. M marriages and relationships restored? Write it. Whatever you're believing for. Young people turned. And I'm telling you, the power of God hit that prayer meeting. You'll see, by the time we got to the end, we were having a praise break in the middle of all that dust. Hallelujah. Just getting excited. And that's what God's doing right now. But take a look at this. It'll build your faith. And I, you'll see it by the end that we're believing as we're growing as quickly as we are, this is just going to be a layover in Jesus' name. But God opened this up supernaturally. Take a look at this. Watch this video. Lord, we ask you to do supernatural things in this house. Lord, let this location be a place where people's lives are turned around. Let this place be a space where souls are saved, where people are baptized in the Holy Ghost, where healing happens, where cancer dies, where addictions are broken, where people step into deliverance, where demons have to go. We thank you, Lord, this will be a place where increase will come, that people's businesses will flourish, where prosperity will flow. I pray that every depression, anxiety, sickness, disease, addiction, it'll break off and have to leave them for good in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a place of freedom. This is a place of breakthrough. This is a place of turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I feel it all over just watching it again. God is doing amazing things. And I'm telling you, that's how God's going to move for us. Quickly. Somebody shout quickly. And so we're going to pray. The Lord will speak to you. But tonight, do something by faith that says, God, I'm releasing my faith that in 2024, we're going to see supernatural increase in our family, in our business, in our ministry. Whatever God has put your hand to do, you're going to see rapid increase in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? Would you bow your head, Father? I thank you, Lord, for every faithful sower that's in this place. And, Lord, as we hear your voice tonight, we will sow seed and we expect a quick harvest to come back into our hands. Lord, I pray right now that whatever the enemy tried to use to hold back their blessing, to hold back their increase, it is moved out of the way by your power tonight. Let this be a year that debts are canceled. Let this be a year that increase floods in from every side. Let their businesses flourish. Let their ministries flourish by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that Encounter Church would, in, would see such a, a massive increase that it would make sense to the natural mind, that things would come in from every direction. Lord, I thank you that even
even for this church, debts are being canceled. I thank you, Lord, that you're taking them to a place of such increase that people will call and say, Pastor, what strategies did you have to make that happen? And he'll just have to say, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. We've just seen the increase of heaven. Lord, open the windows of heaven over this place, over every faithful person here, and let this be a year that all we can do is rejoice and say it's the Lord's doing and marvelous in our eyes. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say amen. 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 They'll put the instructions up on the screen there in the center. Those of you that are giving, if you need an envelope, there's one close by. There's digital ways to give. If you're watching on a uh, line on one of our platforms, uh, one of our YouTube channel or Facebook or whatever, you know how to give, miracleword.com. But if you're here, here's the instructions. Sow seed. Watch what God will do. On top of that, I want to make sure you have time to look at that, that stuff so they can leave it up. But there's a book that I want to bless you with. If it's your first time, and there were a lot of first-time hands tonight, if it's your first time this week in the revival, there's a book that it's getting ready to come back from the printer, and I want to sew it in your life absolutely free. It's a book called No More Lack, 10 Decisions That Produce Financial Abundance. And you can scan the QR code, or you can go to the back table, and they'll help you sign up to get it. Not only am I not charging you for the book, I'm shipping it to your house absolutely free, but it's coming back quickly. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're doing that as well. And I'm telling you that uh, the Lord impressed this upon my heart because as I've traveled these last 22 years, it's amazing to hear stories where people say, you know, God spoke to me to do this. I stepped out by faith. I sowed a seed. And there's so many miracle stories that you can hear of how it shouldn't have even happened. It shouldn't even make sense. But God opened the windows of heaven and poured out blessings that nobody has room to contain. And there are specific things in the Scripture that will show you how to walk in supernatural overflow. Amen. And I'll give you 10 in this book that will help you forever to live in a place of no more lack. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you this. If you're believing for America to be shaken, the pastor was so kind to allow us to do this last year, and we feel such a close connection. I told him this year, I said, man, we felt like family from the first time. I love being able to get to spend time with your pastors. It's amazing. You know, we laugh because I talk about it. I grew up in the Assemblies of God. Of course, we preached at a lot of Church of God churches and Church of God in Christ and, you know, Pentecostal places. But then you know what you realize? And you realize this very quickly, that doesn't matter what denomination you go into, you quickly find people of like faith. People that are kingdom-minded people. And I'll tell you, God draws that company together. I'm telling you, there's people that are in this room tonight. There's some that are Church of God sitting here. Others that grew up Assemblies of God. You might have grown up in the Pentecostal holiness or the Church of God in Christ. But what you find out is it's one Holy Ghost. It's one Jesus Christ. It is one faith. It's one baptism. And we're here together believing for breakthrough in America. Amen. And I'm telling you, that's why as I, my, my wife and I are talking about it. It's, it's great to have people of like faith. In the Bible, they said, our own company. Amen. There's a company of believers who have that kind of faith. And I'm telling you, that's why I'm tell, this, this church being here, it's not only easy to preach to you. I can tell you're people of like faith that have a heart. You know, probably even more than in some places I go because you're so close to the capital of this nation and you have you see the goings on and people here working in Washington DC and believing God for Washington DC to be changed and shaken by the power of the Holy Ghost and I'm believing with you I want to give you an opportunity maybe you've never done this but my wife and I we prayed and asked the Lord to send a thousand people in this nation that would stand and partner with this ministry and believe that America will be saved Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you feel that God's telling you to be one of those. Pray about it. And if you are, we say thank you for standing with us. And, of course, you can always go to MiracleWord.com and see all that we're doing. But if you feel in your spirit you're to be one of those, we say thank you. Amen. And I'll tell you, God is joining us to faith-filled people all over this nation. We have one goal, to see this nation change before it's too late. Can you say amen? You know why? Time's running out and Jesus is coming. But before he does, we're going to take as many people with us as we can get. Can you say amen to that? When you're ready to give, would you stand on your feet tonight, lift your offering to the Lord, and declare this with me. Say, thank you, Lord, for giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I can't be cursed because I'm blessed. When I come in, 
and when I go out. I'm blessed in the city and field. I am blessed. My basket and storehouse, they are blessed. Wherever my foot treads, whatever my hand touches, it is blessed. In Jesus' name, and everybody shout amen. Come on as they praise. Come on and give tonight. God bless you. And Go I've ahead. got joy down in my soul. I've got peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I got joy. I got joy. I got joy down in my soul. I got peace that I won't let go. Like a river rising higher. I got joy. The river of joy, the river of joy, the river is rising, 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 the river is rising, 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 the river is rising, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy, the river is rising, 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 the river is rising, 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 the river is rising, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy. It's over my head, 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 the river of joy, the river of joy, it's over my head, 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 it's over my this place. Father, I thank you that every heart is open to receive your mighty word. Lord, as we get ready to minister to your precious people, I thank you there's not one attack of the enemy that can take them out. But tonight we declare we receive our breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. And if you believe that, clap those hands and give Jesus one more praise. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you appreciate this worship team, let them know you love them tonight before you're seated. Hallelujah. You know, you've got power through the name of Jesus. Somebody say his name. Jesus. Yeah, it's the name above every other name. And in fact, if you have your Bibles, Philippians chapter 2 tells us that very thing. That Paul writing to the church in Philippi says something so awesome. I love this passage. Uh, I'm going to start reading in verse 9. It's part of a longer thought, but verses 9, 10, and 11, Paul writes, Therefore, God has highly exalted him, that is Christ, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That's Philippians 2 and verse 9. Now look at 10. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Then he breaks it down. In heaven, on the earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God 
the Father. I love that. He said, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. You know what that means? Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. So he said, angels are the first ones that have to bow. Because he said first, in heaven. That means every angel has to bow their knee at the name of Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. On the earth. You know what that shows you? Every knee on the earth will bow. That didn't say Christian knees. That means also Muslim knees will bow. Hindu knees will bow. Buddhist knees will bow. New Age knees will bow. Atheist and agnostic knees will bow. And every tongue will have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Of all. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. He didn't stop with the earth. He said, and under the earth. That means every demon has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus Christ. Now understand something. The name of Jesus, it's a breakthrough name. It's a name the devil hates to hear. Because the moment you speak the name of Jesus, the devil has lost any ability to continue to harass you or your family or your children or your body or mind or anything. Because the name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. The Bible says this, and Jesus is the one talking in the Gospel of John chapter 16. He said, up until now, you've asked the Father nothing in my name. He said, but now, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Oh, look at this now. He said, so ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be, yeah, come on now. The name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. I said the name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. The name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. It's a name that causes demons to come out. I said it causes demons to come out. It causes cancer cells to die. Causes deaf ears to open up. Causes COVID to go. Every attack of the enemy loses its grip at the name of Jesus Christ. I was in Boston one time, and I was just sitting in my truck, and I was waiting for my wife and another pastor's wife and pastor. They had run in to get a coffee in a coffee shop there, but you know, you go downtown Boston, man, there's no parking. You can't hardly. I said, I'll sit here till they make me move and I'll circle the block till you get the coffees. And out of that place comes a woman who was so demon possessed. I mean, she was literally just coming out. You could tell. She was just, and I, you could sense it. If you're a Christian, you have what the Bible calls the discerning of spirits. You know if there's something going on. And so here she comes down the sidewalk. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to jump out of this car and start screaming and rebuking and all that. I said, I'll just wait. I won't even roll my window down. I said, when she comes up next to this car, I'm just going to say it real soft out of my mouth and watch the power of God over demons. And so here she's coming. She's screaming at the sky, and she's coming down just manifesting all crazy. And she came up next to my truck there in Boston, and she was parallel with my driver's window. And it's not because she could see me. No, no, no. My windows are tinted darker than a drug dealer. She couldn't see me. The pre he said, who's in it? The preacher's in there. That's who's in it. And she came up, stood there, and I said real softly, in the name of Jesus, go, just like that. And I mean, when I said go, she hit the ground, boom, off her feet, hit the cement. I, I, I just, in case people think, oh, preacher makes those stories up. I had my phone out too. I was video, I was, I'm going to show her, people think I'm messing around, in the name of Jesus, go. And when I did, she hit the deck, boom. She hit the ground, started rolling all over the place, screaming at the sky. I, and I, I didn't roll the window. I said, that's enough. Get out of here in Jesus' name. And she jumped up and ran down the sidewalk, just like that. I never spoke to her one time. I was just taking authority by the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name that's above every name. And she ran and ran down the block and got out of there. I'm telling you, the devil can sense the power of God that's on the inside of you. The devil can sense it. My, my father, when he was first uh, married to my mother, and her father wasn't really serving the Lord that well back then. And uh, my dad and mom were at this, like, local, kind of like a fair, like a fairgrounds kind of a place with all the, all the different rides and all the stuff. And there was a lady that had set up a fortune teller's booth. And she's over there. And uh, my father, who's very young, just, just out of Bible school, and my mother, and he comes in. 
and he's standing up next to that fortune teller's booth, and the lady, she runs out. Hey, I know who you are. That's what she screams at my father. He'd never been there in his life. He never met that woman, but that demon in her knew who he was. She said, I know who you are. And he said, I know who you are too. And she ran. She ran back in that hut and slammed the door. And he said, she's just in, she's peeking outside the curtains. She keeps looking to see if he's going to go. She said, he said, well, if the devil knows I'm here, I'm going to stick around and close this shop down. And he just stood there. She's peeking to see if he's going to leave. I ain't leaving. I got authority over the devil. Because we have access to the name that's above every other name. Hallelujah. That at that name, every knee has to bow. Every tongue has to to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, yes. When I was in Brazil, uh, they had, a lady came down. If you've heard me tell this story, I'm just trying to show you. The name of Jesus at your disposal is more powerful than anything you can imagine. Anything. Doesn't matter if every demon in hell lined up against you with the devil at the helm and came against you like an army. All it took, all it would take is one believer that stood there flat-footed with the power of the name of Jesus on their tongue to send every demon running back where it came from and to send the devil scurrying away. Because there's more power in one believer than in every devil in hell. Hallelujah. There's more power in one believer and I was preaching in Brazil and I called the, the place was jam packed about 1600 people I called for people to be saved and here comes well over a hundred and some people to the altar to receive Jesus that night and a woman comes down Nobody spoke English there. It was so rural. I wasn't in one of the cities. I was out in the country. And so here comes this woman. She's about five foot tall, and she's got her arms folded, and she's walking down, and she's got an angry look on her face. I thought, my Lord, either my interpreter did a terrible job tonight, or she just hates my preaching. And she came down, angry look on her face, just radiating hate out of her face. And I'm standing like, what in the world is she so upset about? Well, I understood the point. She's got a demon. And so I, she lines up with everybody else. And as I get ready to pray the prayer of salvation with all those people at the altar, she begins to manifest. And she screams out. And she tries. She, now she's going down the line trying to punch all the new believers in the face. And she's just this little woman, five foot. But it, so much demonic power, it took four full-grown men to hold her down to the ground. Well, if you've ever heard me tell the story, I learned my lesson years ago as a young teenage boy. And I was going to just address that demon and that girl. I said, you know what, I'm not doing that till I get all these people saved first. Because I can remember I was a young teenager, and I went into one of Brother Shambach's tent meetings, and he was preaching, and a guy started manifesting in the crowd. So he came down off the platform, cast the devil out of that guy, and no lie, the man got free, and that demon jumped into somebody else, and somebody over here started manifesting. And so he cast it out of that person, jumped into somebody over here, and finally the demon spoke out of the person and said, we're going to wear you out tonight, Shambach, just like that. We're going to wear you out. He said, oh, he got, he got wise real quick. He said, bring that person to me here at the altar. And they brought that demon-possessed person, Brother Shambach, and he held him by the arm. He said, now, folks, I'm going to cast the demon out of this man. But when I do, if your soul is not right with God, you're an open vessel for this demon to enter in. He said, so I'm going to give an altar call right now. If you're not ready, you need to get to this altar. People came running. My God. <laughs> You know it's rough when people come out of the choir, the, the associate pastor, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me. God. They came from everywhere. I promise you, out of the choir. I mean, people off the platform coming to the altar, Lord, forgive me for my sin. And he, he got all those people saved first. He learned his lesson. I ain't staying here all night casting the same demon out of 5,000 people. So he got them saved first. And then when they were all saved and said amen, he cast the demon out of that man. He was free. Demon had to go. So I learned my lesson. I said, I ain't doing that either. I said, so hold her on the ground till I'm done praying. And I said, everybody lift your hands. And we prayed. And I mean, those people were shouting in Portuguese, the prayer of salvation. They're, they're praising God. They're saved. I felt the gift of faith hit me, man. And I ran not even thinking. The platform was taller than this by about three feet. And I ran and jumped off the front of the platform, realizing, holy smokes, it's taller than I thought it was. I hit the ground, and when I landed, boom, 
I'm straddling this little woman on the ground, looking over her, and she's just, oh, it's just so much hate coming up out of her face. I, can't, I said, in the name of Jesus. You know, I looked at her before I prayed. This is the part that made me laugh. I looked at her in that face. I said, speaking to the demon in her, I said, you're coming out tonight in Jesus' name. And in perfect English with no accent. No, I'm not. Just like that. And my interpreter did not follow me jumping off the stage. He took the stairs on the side. So he was just now arriving to the scene of the crime. And I looked at him. I said, I didn't need you for that one. This demon speaks English. <laughs> and so I looked back. I said, oh, yes, you are. You're coming out tonight. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. And I said, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every other name. Oh, hallelujah. I'll tell you, Bible school students, get me on this. Two things demons hate, the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. In fact, side story, there was a, a time when Brother Shambach was traveling with an older minister that was his mentor. Anybody ever heard the name A.A. A. Allen? Do you remember A.A. A. Allen? And Brother Allen was holding tent crusades across America, and they were, they were seeing people delivered and healed. Well, a demon-possessed per person started manifesting, and Brother Allen said, Brother Shambach, take them to the prayer tent, cast the devil out of them. So they, they're in there casting the devil out, and this is a stubborn one. He's not coming out. He's not responding. And so Brother Shambach said, Devil, you can't stay, for the blood of Jesus has already defeated you. And after all they'd been praying, after he said that, that demon spoke out and said, Don't say that. He said, Oh, I got him now. He said, No, the blood of Jesus already defeated you 2,000 years ago. Oh, don't say that. He said, and, then, and then this is Brother Shamrock wrote in his book. He said, The demon spoke and said, I know that, but everybody doesn't know it. Get that. I know that, but everybody doesn't know it. You know what that means? It means there are people that are living below their privileges in Christ because they don't know their rights in God. They don't know their rights in Christ. And there's some preachers that have stood on platforms and told people that if you're going through something, a sickness, a demon, whatever, it's because the Lord has put it on you to test you. He's put it on you to teach you a lesson. And so now you got people in the body of Christ that that when they're going through something, they don't know whether to stand against it by faith or to just ask God to give them the strength to bear it. But God doesn't send wicked things to destroy you. God is not a child abuser. I said God's not a child abuser. God doesn't tempt any man with evil. He doesn't put sickness on your body. He doesn't put demons in your family. He doesn't destroy your finances. He doesn't destroy your peace. He doesn't steal your joy. He gives you good things every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father above in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Shout amen to that. Amen. Only good gifts come from God. God's not evil. He doesn't do evil things. And he's not somehow in partnership with the devil. Paul made that clear in 2 Corinthians 6. What relationship can there be between light and darkness, between a believer and an unbeliever, between the temple of God and idols, between Christ and the devil. There's no partnership. There's no partnership. And when you hear these preachers preaching this stuff, it's wicked. I said it's wicked. They'll stand before God one day and be judged by a holy God for standing in front of his precious children and telling them, that if their family died of a sickness or disease, or if they have a sickness or disease, or if they're going from problem to problem, it's because God's testing you. It's because God's trying to show you something. Just lean into him. No, that's not how God moves. I mean, I'm not even close to as good of a father as God. But I got children. I can't imagine. I remember my kids. You know, toddlers are interested in everything. They're interested in what's going on in the kitchen. They're interested in the little, uh, you know, outlets on the wall. When my young cousin was, was, was just a kid, thank God his life was spared. He, he was playing. He told me, he said, I was playing car against the wall. I said, you were playing car? He said, yeah, I went and got my dad's car keys, and I sat against the wall, and I was playing. He said, I put it in the ignition to turn the key. He put it into the wall outlet. It shot him back across the room. His whole arm was blackened, just burnt right up his arm. Thank God he didn't die. Kids get into anything. 
But can you imagine me as a dad, and I'm sitting over there at the kitchen table, and I watch my little child drag a chair over into the kitchen where the oven's on to make eggs and bacon, and that hot flame is, and they get up on that chair. They just want to feel it. They're interested in what it is, and they're reaching their hand toward that flame. No loving father is going to sit back and go, let, let them go ahead and touch it. They won't do that again. No. You know what a father's going to do? Run toward that child and pull them away and say, don't touch that. That's hot. You know why? Please write this in your notes if you're taking notes. It's because God wants you to learn by instruction, not destruction. God wants you to learn by instruction, not destruction. God does not put evil things on you to teach you a lesson. He gives you his word. He tells you what to do and what not to do. And if there is a problem coming at you, he tells you how to handle it by the power of your faith and the name of Jesus Christ, which is the greatest name that ever was or ever will be. It's the highest name. Hallelujah. Every other name is below the name of Jesus. Anything that's got a name has got a knee. Anything with a name has a knee, and that knee has to bow. Cancer's got a name, and it's got a knee, and it has to bow in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Every attack of the devil is so far below the name of Jesus that it has to submit itself to the power of God. And so I, I got over that lady. I said, in the name of Jesus... I command you, come out of her right now. And I mean, she thrashed on the ground, and then she went limp like she was out under the power of God. And then the, the ladies of the church came over, and they kind of brought her to. And when she sat up, she looked around. And now she could only speak Portuguese, couldn't speak English anymore. And now she's looking around. She's asking them in Portuguese, where am I? What is this place? She didn't even know what the place was. She didn't even know where she was. What is this place? They said, you're in church. And they led her over to the pastor that was sitting in this chair. And in Portuguese, he led her to Jesus. And then that night, we were going to lay hands on everybody and anoint them with oil. Here she comes through the line with a big smile on her face, with her hands lifted up. Oh, that's a big change. Let me tell you, it's a big change inside when a demon goes out and Jesus comes in. And the thing that had harassed her for so long before that night could no longer hang on her. Why? Because the name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. I said the name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. The name of Jesus is a breakthrough name. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, my Father will give it to you. Hallelujah. I said he'll give it to you. The name is so powerful. No, no demon can stand it. The devil can't stand it. Whew, glory to God. Even when the one with the name appears, whew, his identity <laughs> is so powerful. Do you know how powerful the name is? Watch this. If you've never seen this before. They're in the garden. People think, you know, you hear people that get around this Easter time. They say, well, you know, they murdered our Lord. They didn't murder Jesus. They didn't murder Jesus. They didn't kill him. They didn't assassinate him. If they could have done that, they'd have done it many times before the day of crucifixion. They tried many times before. They picked up stones to stone him. How many stones hit him? Not one. They rushed him up a, a hill to throw him off of a cliff, the Bible says, and he just passed through the crowd. Hallelujah. You know why? Because you can't murder the master. You can't murder the master. They didn't murder him. He said what was going to happen. He said, I've got the power to lay down my life, and because I do, I've got the power to take it back up again so they're not going to kill me I'm going to lay this life down for the ones I love and so here he is in the garden of Gethsemane and he's in there he'd been in the synagogue every day they could have taken him out of the synagogue and here he is and all these guards fully loaded they got all their armor on got their swords, their spears and they looked. it looked so ridiculous that Jesus said to them what am I, some dangerous revolutionary that you get a whole battalion of guys to come take me away? And then he asked a question. Get this in your spirit. He said, who are you looking for? And they said, well, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Now, you think if you read scripture, if you just read it quickly, you think that he's affirming you found him. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. But that's not what he said. If you look in the scripture and see what actually happened, Read it for yourself. 
In fact, if you have an old school Bible that still italicizes words that were added for understanding by the translator, you'll see what he actually said was capital I, capital A, capital M, the lowercase italicized he, because that's not in the Greek. What he actually said was, I am. And you know what he was saying? You came out here looking for a carpenter. You, you came out here looking for somebody doing crown molding. But I'm not out here building rocking chairs. What you did is you came out looking for a carpenter and you found the great I am. And the Bible says when he reintroduced himself to the soldiers, just the power of his name and his identity knocked every one of them back on their backs. As soon as he said, I am, they all fell out. Because all he had to do was say his name and their swords became useless and their spears meant nothing and their armor couldn't protect him because the name of Jesus is greater than any other attack from anywhere. I am. Somebody shout, I am. Oh yeah, the same I am that was standing in the garden was the same I am that was burning in the fire, the bush, when Moses said, who should I tell Pharaoh sent me? He said, you go tell him, I am that I am has sent you. That was Jesus in the bush. He is the fire of God from heaven. He's the word that doesn't run out. Oh yes. The great I am. He's the great I am. <laughs> I'm telling you, his power is here tonight. Get ready for your touch from heaven. It's your breakthrough night. I said it's your breakthrough night. I said it's your breakthrough night. It's your breakthrough night. Who does the devil think he's talking to? Who does he think he's messing with? The Bible says Jesus not only laid down his life, he told his disciples, I'm going to tear this temple down, but in three days, I'm going to raise it back up again. They, they were so thick, they thought he was talking about the temple building. But after he was resurrected, the Bible says they realized, hold on, he was talking about himself. Yeah, pay attention. He was talking about himself. And so the Bible says, oh, hallelujah. You know, I like this. Jesus said three days, but he was so powerful, he didn't even need a full three days. Because the Bible said he died on the evening of the first day. And you know when they got to the third day, it was early in the morning before the sun came up. And they're running to the tomb to see what's going to happen. And by the time they get there, it's still dark. But the stone's already been rolled away. And the tomb is empty. And the grave clothes remain. And an angel had to tell him, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. I said he's risen. Death could not hold him. <laughs> Death could not hold him. Death could not hold him. You know why? He's got no rival. He's got no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. I got to say it again. You have no rival. I want to preach on that for a minute. Because when we sing he's got no rival, people don't even understand the power of what that means. People think that Jesus is the power in the realm of light. And Satan's the power in the realm of the darkness. And they're somehow arm wrestling to see who's going to win the war. But that's not the case. The devil is not Jesus' rival. I said the devil is not Jesus' rival. Here's why. Because in order to have a rival, they've got to be in your league. That's why the New York Yankees can't pull up to Fredericksburg and go to some high school and jump on their baseball field and be their number one rival. The reason they can't be the high school's rival team is because they're not in the same league as the high school. They're in a higher league, so you can't even play on their field. And what I came to tell you tonight, the reason he's got no rival is because nobody's on his level. Nobody's in his league. He's greater. I said he's greater. You have no rival. You have no equal. 
Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Because you have no. Come on. You have no. Hey. For God you reign. And yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all. There it is. It's the name above all names. I said he's got the name above all names. At that name, every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. Jesus Christ, he's Lord of all. I said he's Lord of all. Lord of all. He's so powerful. Nobody can handle him. I said, nobody can handle him. I said, nobody can handle him. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Tiffany, do we have that video of that's my king? Do we have that video? We have it? There was a preacher. You ever seen that? There was a preacher whose name was Dr. S.M. Lockridge. His full name, Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. God bless his parents. <laughs> Dr. Shadrach Meshach Lockridge. He preached a message one time called, That's My King. And he was preaching about Jesus. But there was so much you can say about Jesus, he took the whole time just saying different things about the power of Christ. And he had all these different phrases. He said the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. He said, no far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. Hallelujah. That's my king. And he just goes on, on and on and on, talking about the power of Jesus and who he is. You want to know something powerful? When Joshua was on the earth and he was getting ready to fight a battle, the Bible says the commander of the Lord's army walked up to Joshua on the battlefield and looked him in the eye. And he said, hold on, who are you? Are you for us or are you against us? He said, neither, but I have come. He said, I'm just here. <laughs> I just showed up. And he said, I don't, know, I don't know who you are. But the Bible says he recognized the power that was in that commander of the Lord's army. You know what the Bible says Joshua did? Fell down on the ground and began to worship the commander of the Lord's army. Now, you study the Bible for yourself. Any time that any man or woman in the Bible fell down and began to worship an angel, the angels would say, get up. Do not worship us, but worship God alone who's worthy of the praise. But in this story, the commander of the Lord's army just stood there and received all of Joshua's worship. You know why? Because the one who is the commander of the Lord's army, when Christmas time comes around, we call him this. He's the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. When I was young, I didn't know what that meant. I'd only been to Applebee's and I'd met a hostess. I thought that meant he was the host above all hosts. He can get you a better table than anybody can get you. But I got a newer translation of the Bible, and it says he's the Lord of heaven's armies. The hosts are angelic armies. He's the commander of heaven's armies. And here you see a story in the Old Testament where Jesus came down from heaven. Before he was brought through Mary's womb, he was the word made flesh after Mary gave birth. But before that, he was the pre-incarnate Christ. And he stood in front of Joshua. You want to hear something powerful? If you actually go into the Hebrew language, Jesus' name is Joshua. Joshua's name is Joshua, and Jesus' name is Joshua. The reason we say Jesus is because when it was written in Greek and then carried over into, into uh, Latin, it is Iesus. It's the same name in Hebrew and in Greek. We just 
just took the pronunciation, Iesus, and it became Jesus. But that name is Yeshua or Yahashua. It's the same name. That was the day that the earthly Joshua looked into the eyes of the eternal Joshua, who was the commander of the Lord's armies. And what I'm telling you is that when God's on your side, there's nobody that can stand against you. You might have a 300-man army, and it looks impossible. But when the commander's standing next to you, there's not one weapon formed against you that can prosper. If you believe it, shout yes. Name is Jesus. I said his name is Jesus. The name above all names. I said he's the name above all names. No rival. No equal. Now and forever, he reigns. He reigns. <laughs> I said he reigns. I said he reigns. He reigns. He reigns over America. He reigns over Washington, D.C. He reigns over Fredericksburg. He reigns over Virginia. He reigns over Canada. I don't care what the devil thought he was going to do in North America. Those plans are being thwarted by the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't expect to go down. Get ready for revival to sweep through all 50 states, every territory, through Canada, through Mexico, through Europe, through the nations of Africa, through Asia, through Australia. Get ready for the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you shout amen? amen. Somebody shout, that's my, king. that's my king. Watch this. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I, I wonder do you know him? <laughs> my king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! Somebody lift up a shout of 
of praise. Somebody shout, that's my king. Shout, that's my king. I want you to stand on your feet all over this place. Lift your hands to heaven as the worship team comes back. But I'm telling you, there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. There's not one weapon formed against you that can be allowed to prosper. Hallelujah. I said not one weapon formed against you can be allowed to prosper. We're standing here tonight believing for signs and wonders and miracles. There's people who have loved ones that are believing for deliverance, believing for healing. We're believing that sickness and diseases will be destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I don't care what lie the devil's launched at you. It is not coming to pass in Jesus' name. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to touch you tonight, and you'll never be the same again. I said you'll never be the same again. You'll never be the same again, for he's got the name that's above every name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and begin to thank him. Begin to praise him. He's great and greatly to be praised. I said he's great and greatly to be praised. Nobody like Jesus. I said, there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Just begin to play on the piano, if you would, for me, Miss Keyboard Player. Just play the piano for a moment as the presence of the Lord is touching people already. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God's already moving. Before I've laid hands on one person, the power of God is already moving in this place, already touching you, already changing you. Things are turning in your favor. I said things are turning in your favor. Things are turning in your favor. Things are turning in your favor. I said they're turning in your favor. Ha, ha, ha. Turning in your favor. Not one weapon formed against you can prosper. God's moving on your behalf. This is your season of blessing. God's reaching out his hand tonight. Touching men, touching women. Though the devil had a plan to destroy you, God had a plan to watch over you, take care of you. And tonight, breakthrough is here for you. I said breakthrough is here for you by the power of the wonderful Holy Spirit. Breakthrough from heaven. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs from heaven. My sister, let me pray for you. For though the enemy sent an attack, the Lord is working it out. And your own family is being touched and changed by the power of God. The Lord said, I heard every prayer you prayed. Don't feel like the heavens are shut up, like I'm not hearing your prayers. I'm hearing every prayer that you've prayed, and I'm already working on your behalf. Even behind the scenes, when you can't see me working, I've been working, and I'm touching not only you, but your loved ones as well. And this is going to be a year of unprecedented breakthrough in your family that things you've been believing for for a long time are coming to pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And you're going to see right now that what looked like an irreversible attack looked like the devil came and just began to attack your home. It comes to an end tonight in Jesus' name. Isn't that right? For from this night, God is working on your behalf and everything that was launched against your family and against your home, it comes to a quick end. Lift your hands, receive it. Power of God comes upon you tonight. Fire of the Holy Ghost come upon her. In the name of Jesus, every burden is lifted off your shoulders. Every attack is broken. Every yoke destroyed. In the name of Jesus, I lose strength. I lose peace in the Holy Ghost. From this night, you'll never be the same. Ever, ever, ever. Never again. Sure night of freedom. Lift those hands all over this place. I'm telling you, God is moving by his power. Begin to thank him for every miracle that's taken place this week. Thank him for what he's going to do tonight. Thank him that burdens are lifted. Thank him that you're not going to deal with the same old stuff that's always gone on for years. That's coming to an end in Jesus' name. Ha, 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 ha. It comes to an end in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My sister right here that's a singer, lift your hands. Power of God's on you right now. Hey, you'd been crying out for a touch from heaven. There it is. 
the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And even the attacks that you've been, you haven't even hardly told anybody, but the attacks that have come against your physical body. You say, well, I'm strong. I'll just fight through it. But no, the Lord says, I'll take care of it for you. And you'll not have these attacks staying in your body. Specifically here, lay hands on your stomach. And the pains that sometimes shoot through your stomach right here, the Lord heals it by the power of his spirit. Fire of God, come upon her tonight. And right down your back to the lower back where you've had pain and stiffness. Isn't that right? Yes. yes. Well, tonight the Lord's healing you. Hallelujah. Be made whole by the power of the Holy Ghost. Healed by the power of God. Oh, from this night, no more issues in the stomach, no more issues in the back. Be made whole in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, the Lord just gave you a new song of praise with that one. Glory to God. <laughs> you say, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing in the devil's ugly face. I said, I'm laughing in the devil's ugly face. He can't, he can't mess with you anymore. We're, we're standing tonight on the name of Jesus and the word of God. That's eternal. Hallelujah. Somebody say eternal. Take a minute. Lift your hands all over this place. I mean, God's moving. This is our breakthrough night. I said, this is our breakthrough night. This is our breakthrough night. This is our breakthrough night. We're leaving with what we came for. We're leaving with our testimony in our hands. Come on, please. Every hand lifted. Worship the name that's above every name. He's so wonderful. He's so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We give you honor. We give you glory. We give you praise. There's nobody like him. That's my king. That's my king. That's my king. Tonight, every burden. Now listen to what I'm saying. A burden is something that people have carried and carried and carried. Put on your shoulders. The Bible says in Isaiah, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What is a yoke? If you've ever seen old school farming or old school carriages, you know they yoke those animals up. They'll yoke them up together. For what purpose? Oxen or horses or whatever, they can pull farming equipment, they can pull a carriage. What are they doing? That thing around their neck, it yokes them up so they have to pull a heavy load. And that's what the devil tries to do to people. He tries to yoke them up around their neck so they have to go through life pulling a load that's not their load to pull. That's why Jesus said, casting all your cares upon me. Why? He cares for you. He's the one that carries your burdens. He wants you to carry his blessings so he can carry your burdens. And from tonight, the people that the devil's yoked you up to try to pull heavy burdens through life, tonight the yoke is being broken off of your neck. I'm telling you there's an anointing here that even addictions are being broken. Even things that have held people in bondage for many years. It comes to an end tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you're going to see yokes destroyed and burdens lifted by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen to that. So that's why I say lift those hands. And begin to thank God that he's working on your behalf tonight. That this is your night of breakthrough. This is your night of breakthrough. This is your night of overflow. Every attack of the devil, it ends tonight. In the name of Jesus. Come, let me pray for you. Power of God's on you. Lift your hands. From this night, the anointing of God that's upon your life to do the work that you've been called to do. Don't ever doubt it. Don't ever doubt it. And don't ever let the devil tell you that you're not able to do what God has called you to do. The enemy is a master at making people feel like they're unqualified to do what God's called them to do. But I tell you tonight, you'll never again wonder, am I able to do the thing I've been called to do? For tonight, the spirit of faith comes into you. And you'll run with a new momentum and a new power. And you'll do exactly what God called you to do. Every obstacle is being removed and every attack against your life comes to an end. Fire of the Holy Ghost come upon her tonight in Jesus' name. Be free. Be free from that lie in Jesus' name. 
Oh, lift those hands. I'm telling you, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. Ha, ha, ha. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Glory to God. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. The hymn said, He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of mercy I see. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, tell you, I feel the joy of the Lord in here tonight. That's what you feel when God begins to set the captive free, when he lifts heavy burdens. Oh, joy fills you. Joy fills you. I said joy fills you. <laughs> the joy of the Holy Ghost. Come here, sister. Praise God. Back here. Yeah, come on. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, you got something this week that will never leave you. It's the, <laughs> it's the mighty joy of the Holy Ghost. Overflowing, overwhelming. <laughs> You'll never be the same again. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Receive that tonight. <laughs> Glory to God. The joy of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. From this night, never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm being led by the Spirit. Because in a moment, I'm going to minister to every one of you that needs a touch. But I'm letting God just do whatever He does. His service. We're just being led by the Spirit. Come and lift those hands one more time. Magnify the Lord of glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when the lies of the devil come at you, sometimes you need to just start laughing. Just laugh right in the face of the devil. And tells you you can't make it. Tells you you're not going to recover. Tells you you're not going to get any better. It's never going to look any different. Just start laughing in his face. <laughs> laugh right in his face because the devil's a liar I said the devil's a liar I said the devil's a liar if God said it he will do it and if he spoke it he's going to bring it to pass I said he's going to bring it to pass he's going to bring it to pass I want to pray for you belt buckle come if you don't know people's names you just use the clothing they're wearing it helps to differentiate stand right here <sighs> lift your hands You've been praying and asking God to use you to make a mark on your generation, to do supernatural things by the power of the Holy Ghost. You've actually been praying, God, use me in the gifts of the Spirit. Let me see the gifts of the Spirit in activation in my life, in my ministry. I don't want to be, you've actually said words just like this, I don't want to be just like a normal preacher. I don't want to be just like a, I don't want to be just like a run-of-the-mill evangelist or preacher. I want, I want you to use me to mark my generation with supernatural power. And I want you to know the Lord not only hears those prayers, but he's looking for people that will stand up and boldly represent his anointing and his power on the earth that are not ashamed of the fire of the Holy Ghost, that are not ashamed of his goodness and his mercy, not ashamed of the gifts and the fire of the Holy Ghost. And so I tell you from this night, get ready, because the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes upon you in a new measure. And you'll begin to see miracles and signs and wonders even before this year comes to an end. And as you're ministering to people, it won't even be necessarily in church services, but even on the street. And when you're talking to people about Jesus, the Lord will show you things by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then miracles will begin to happen. And you'll be so happy because you'll see the manifestations of God's power at work through your own life. So receive that grace tonight. Fire of the Holy Ghost come upon him. Receive that grace tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Receive that grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Somebody lift your hands. God is touching his people. Oh, Rose Kidiatalaha. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, the power of God is so real that if you're here tonight but you're not ready for heaven, you better be ready before you leave. 
I'm telling you, tonight's your night for freedom. Tonight's your night for a new beginning. In Jesus' name, it's your night for a new beginning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I magnify you. I lift you up. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the anointing on you. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Fire of God. Come upon him tonight. Something new is getting ready to happen. We're going to see revivals break out all over this nation. One after the other. It won't be uncommon. You'll see it spring up here and there, and then here and there, and here and there, state to state, state to state. And people say, do you hear what's happening in Idaho? Do you hear what's happening? Do you hear what's going on in Nevada? Do you hear what's going on? Do you hear the thing that happened in Louisiana? Do you hear what happened in Pennsylvania? Do you hear what happened in Fredericksburg, Virginia? I'm going to tell you, God's moving by his power. And it's going to break out all over this nation because God's not done with America. I said, God's not done with America. God's not done with America. I said, God's not done with America. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. <laughs> oh, yes. Glory to God. Somebody say, it is well with my soul. Say it again. It is well with my soul. Yeah, when the devil tries to bring you some report that's contrary to the word of God, open your mouth and just say, it is well with my soul. 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 <laughs> it is well with my soul. Thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. It is well with my soul. In Jesus' name. I said, in Jesus' name. I feel this in my spirit. I want every one of those Bible school students to just come right here. I'm going to lay hands on you. I just felt to do that in my spirit right now. Every one of you. For tonight, the Lord is pouring out something fresh and new in you. And you'll not be the same. Stretch all the way down if you would. One line. Single-minded. Glory to God. Something new is coming upon you tonight. The grace of God. To do the work of God. <laughs> There's a fire springing up in you. A fire that will not be put out by any devil, by the spirit of this world, by any attack of the enemy. There's a fire springing up. A fire springing up. I said a fire springing up. I said a fire springing up. A fire springing up. God's raising up an army. I said God's raising up an army. 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 <laughs> God's raising up an army. God's raising up an army. God's raising up an army by the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> fire of the Holy Ghost come upon her tonight in the name of Jesus fire of the Holy Ghost receive that grace tonight he's raising up an army in the Holy Ghost fire of God come upon her tonight in the name of Jesus get ready get ready ha 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 fire of the Holy Ghost come upon him tonight you'll not be the same after this night Fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Fire of God come upon him tonight in a new measure. Receive that grace. Huh. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Come upon every one of these. Fresh anointing of God. Hey, Rabba Soto Roko. Fire of God. Oh, there it is. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hey, hey. Miracles, signs, wonders. Receive it in Jesus' name. Oto Ramamaka Hey, hey. Glory. 
double. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Fire of God. Come upon her tonight. Fill to overflowing. Oh, Come on, can we sing it one time? Every voice. You have no rival. You have no equal. You have no Post of sin. is the kingdom. Come on, the name above all names. Before we minister, I want every head to be bowed, every eye to be closed. God's touching people right now. These young people here, these young boys, let the fire of God come upon you tonight. Receive that grace for your generation. You'll be a firebrand in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You'll be a firebrand in the name of Jesus. Oh, Roshata Ramanda Dike. Redasta. Parotoshe Kididia. Mando Roboboste Kidi. Rakando Rabaye Didiste Pakatai. Sandolo Prodoshe Piv Ramanda Deki. Lord, raise these young men and women up to do mighty things in their generation before Jesus comes. Keep them in a spirit of holiness. Keep them in a spirit of righteousness, a spirit of faith, a spirit of joy, a spirit of peace. Ha, ha, ha. With a hedge of protection around them. No evil thing will come near their dwelling place. Ha, ha. Fire of the Holy Ghost come upon him tonight. Never the same again. Oh, Rosheki Diababastataha. Never the same. Never the same. <laughs> Never the same. Come here, young men. Come here, young men. Shh, lift your hands. Receive that by the power of God. Never the same. Never the same again. Shh. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Shh. That's the anointing. Touch these young men, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Shh. Preachers. Preachers of the gospel. Touch these young women. Preachers of the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. They shall prophesy. Somebody ought to lift your hands for these young people. They shall prophesy. In the name of Jesus. Ha, 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 ha. 
They'll dream dreams. They'll dream dreams. They'll see visions. <laughs> You'll dream dreams. You'll see visions. They'll dream dreams. They'll see visions. They'll dream dreams. They'll see visions. Ah, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, says God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Fire of the Holy Ghost, come upon my children in the name of Jesus Christ. Fire of God on Brooklyn. Fire of God on Teddy in Jesus' name. This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. I said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. God's doing things right now. Things are being turned around that wouldn't turn around for decade after decade, generation after generation, ran through your house, but it's leaving tonight. I'm telling you, this is a breakthrough night by the power of the Holy Ghost. I want you, if you would, to bow your heads all over this church because before we release this anointing, this grace to every man, every woman that's here, I want you to hear me. Jesus is coming soon. And I want to be sure that if you're in this place tonight, that you're ready when Jesus comes. I want to be sure that you're ready to spend eternity in heaven, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and that every sin is forgiven. Not one thing's holding you back. So with every head bowed, listen to me. Every eye closed. You say, look, preacher, I know there's things in my life that I need forgiveness from. I need to know that the Lord has not only forgiven me, but that I'm his child, that I'm a part of the family of God. Don't leave this room without knowing for sure that if Jesus came tonight, you'd be ready to look him in the eye and call him Savior. And if you're here and you say, no, I need to pray that prayer with you. I need to know that I'm forgiven. Right where you're standing, lift your hand high and hold it up. Let me see who you are. Anybody, you need to pray that prayer? Lift it. There's a bunch of you. Wave your hand at me. Don't be ashamed. This is a night of freedom. Jesus is touching you by his power. Here's what I want you to do as we sing it again. Every person, you lifted your hand. I want you to get out of your seat and come stand with me right here at the altar. Come quickly. Come right now. Come, come, come. Don't wait for somebody else. Go ahead, sing it. Come stand right here. Come on. Oh, death could not hold you. Quickly. The veil torn before Come in close. You. Come in close. Come in close. Come right here. Come on in. Come on, if you lifted your hand, come quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it. You have no rival. You have no If you need to come, come quickly. We're going to pray. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Hey. Come on up. Come on, guys. Come in close right here. Come on, yours is the name. Yours is the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm giving you this opportunity because Jesus is moving on people right now. Don't let the enemy steal your eternity because you've been duped into believing, well, everything's fine. I'm not that bad. I'm not that, you know, my, my life's pretty good. No, no. We don't go, the Bible's very clear about this, that there's something that has to take place in every man, every woman's life. There's got to be a time in every person's life where you have publicly declared, I confess Jesus is Lord. I believe God raised him from the dead. The reason we do it publicly is because Jesus said, if you'll confess me in front of men, I'll confess you in front of the Father in heaven. But if you deny me in front of men, I'll deny you in front of my Father which is in heaven. 
Here's what I tell people. This is why we call people to the altar. We don't want camouflage Christianity. This is not quickly slip your hand up and say a prayer under your breath. No. If you can't stand and serve God in front of a room full of people that want you to, you'll never do it in a world full of people that don't want you to. This is not something to be ashamed of. This is something to be happy about because you just go from death unto life and God sets you free from every attack of the devil. It's a freedom. It's a freedom nobody can bring. And so we're going to sing it one more time. But if the enemy's been lying to you, if you're in your seat but you know, man, I need to be down there with them. I need to pray that prayer. This is the Lord speaking to you and telling you tonight is your night to become a part of the family of God. And so as we sing this one more time, if you need to be here with us, even if you didn't raise your hand but you know in your heart, I need to be down there, then come quickly. Don't delay because time is short. Jesus is coming soon. Can you say amen? Come on, sing it one more time. If you need to come, now's the time. Then we're going to pray. Come on, Christians ought to be praying. Yes. Ways to life. Come on, come on. You have no right. Oh Lord, you have no equal. Now and forever. Come on, worship the name of Jesus. Oh yes, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the Lord. Oh, Yours is the name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Those that are here, I'm going to lead you in this prayer. But as I say every night, don't whisper it, don't mumble it. Say it boldly with a loud voice. Because this is the most important decision you've ever made in your whole life. Say it and let the Lord hear you tonight. Pray this with me. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. Tonight I ask you, forgive me of my sin. Make me new. Give me power to live for you for the rest of my life until I die or until you come. I confess Jesus is Lord. Now I believe you raised him from the dead. From this night forward, I am your child and I'm never going back to the old way of living. I belong to Jesus. Now lift your hands and thank God that it's done. Father, I pray that you would fill every one of these with the mighty power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Keep them from every wicked attack of the devil. Lord, no evil thing will come near their dwelling place. Lord, I thank you depression and anxiety can't touch them. I thank you, Lord, that no sickness, no disease will take them out. I pray that you would use them mightily in these final moments of time to do what they've been called to do, that no obstacle will stop them, no hindrance, no roadblock in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, somebody shout a loud amen. 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 Listen, who's got those cards? Carolyn, will you help me? Praise God. We've got something for you here. I want to give it to you. My son's going to help you. Just put it one in, your, one in each hand. This is a gift that I've got, got just for you. I've prepared some things for you guys. And uh, you can use your computer, your tablet, your phone, whatever you've got, and go to either scan that code on the front or go to that website there on the bottom. And I've got some very short but simple videos to answer some important questions for you. And then on the back, the orange side, you'll see on the, on the other side, there's our app for your device, your phone, whatever you got at home. We've got all kinds of videos to teach you, to build your faith. Can you say amen? It's going to help you. Because now that you're a child of God, the next step is building your faith to another level because God's going to use you in a mighty way. Can you say amen? Would you put your hands together and welcome every one of these to the family of God? You can return to your seat. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Whew. We're going to finish this service releasing the anointing and power of God to every one of you that's here to receive. How many came expecting to receive something from God? 
Let me ask you this. How many need a touch from God? Lift your hand. You need a miracle. You need a touch from God. Tonight, we're joining our faith together, and I'm going to lay my hands on you. We're going to minister to you. They're going to worship, but we're going to do what the Bible says and set our faith to receive an impartation from heaven. Can you say amen? Now, we got a bunch of people here tonight, and so I don't want to miss anybody that needs a touch from God. So here's what we're going to do to make it a little bit easier so that there's just one, one line and I can get uh, to everybody is that we're going to start here at the altar, but everybody's going to face out like toward the crowd like this instead of facing to the altar. We're going to face this way, and then we'll go up each aisle. If we have more people, we'll line them up the aisle, down this aisle, um, up this aisle, out that aisle. Ushers will help me. Pentecostal church is the only church you have to tell people to please watch the bodies as you're walking. Watch the bodies. But we're going to minister to you. We're going to lay hands on you. There's some here tonight that are believing for healing in their body. Some are believing for healing for their loved ones. Others, they're believing for a breakthrough from addictions and issues that have attacked their families. Hear me. There's others that are believing God for miracles in their children. We get messages every day in our ministry. Every day. There's people that are believing for impossible things, and people are here tonight. And that's why we're setting our faith. Because the Bible tells us that when we stand and believe, what did I just get done preaching? The name of Jesus is greater than any attack of the devil. And tonight you're going to receive a mighty impartation of the Holy Ghost. Now hear this. The same anointing that heals sickness and disease is the same anointing that breaks addiction. And the same anointing that breaks addiction is the same anointing that will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And so I understand because we have a bunch of people here tonight, if we stopped and got everybody's story along the way, we'd be here till 2 in the morning. But know this, the Lord knows what you need. The reason I say that the same anointing does that is because when I lay hands on you, you don't have to specify to me what you're dealing with because I'm not the healer, I'm not the deliverer, and I'm not the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. But the Lord's going to touch you tonight. And when we lay our hands upon you, whatever's been hanging on you before tonight has to loose its grip and let you go in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to set your faith and believe that whatever was a long-standing issue in your life, it comes to a quick end in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? I mean, even if I lay hands on you tonight, even depression has to leave you. Even anxiety has to leave you. Even weakness or loss of sleep and rest has to leave you. There's people that think what they're dealing with isn't that important. I've actually prayed for people in the prayer line. I'll say, what do you want God to do for you? Oh, Brother Ted. There's others here with such great needs. I don't even want to say mine's not that bad. God cares about what you're going through. Did you know the Bible says we have a high priest who is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He cares about what you're going through. Amen. And so tonight we're going to set our faith and see God do something supernatural in Jesus' name. Say this with me. Tonight is my night to receive a breakthrough. I'm not leaving without my touch from God. I'm not leaving without my impartation. You believe that tonight? All right, so here's what we're going to do. As they get ready to pray, and we're going to praise God tonight, I want you to begin to come. If you would, come here to the altar, and then just start filling all these aisles. You can go up. You can go across the back. Ushers will help us, and I'm going to lay hands on every person. Bible school students, I know I laid hands on you. Some are still out, but I'm going to lay hands on you again. You're leaving here with everything you can get tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, let's praise the Lord a little bit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Bright and morning star, Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess, Jesus Christ is Lord forever. He's the Prince of Peace, the bright and morning star. 
Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Can't stop. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. Hang on one sec. Now look at this. Before we lay our hands on it, look at this. We stretch almost all the way around this church tonight. Don't tell me people don't go to church anymore. Don't tell me people don't go to church on a Friday night. You ought to give God thanks for a hungry group of people. All right, now lift every hand. Say it with me. Tonight's my night. I receive everything God has for me. I'm leaving changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now give him a praise tonight as you receive it. Come on, let's sing it again. is Lord forever. He's the Prince of Peace, right in morning star. Jesus Christ is Lord forever.
tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord forever He's the Prince of Peace the bright and morning star Jesus Christ is Lord
Get all the ushers, media team. Come on, media. Come on, media team. I'm gonna pray for every serve team member, every usher, every media team member, singers. If you got cordless microphones, come on down. I'll come up and pray for the band. We're gonna pray tonight. This church is going to another level. This year, 2024, is going to be a year where you see another level of breakthrough in this house. Can you shout amen? Come on, every hand lifted all over this place. 
God's doing supernatural things at Encounter Church. And we're going to see it. Whatever stood against the work of God in this region, it is broken tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, whatever the enemy tried to set up as an obstacle, as a hindrance, tonight it comes crashing down in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, you'd blow your breath from heaven and blow souls in from every direction in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that those that were far from God are coming into the kingdom this year in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that this, this sanctuary will not be big enough to hold what you're going to do in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I thank you, Lord, this sanctuary will quickly be filled to capacity, and they'll have to go to multiple services or build a new sanctuary or find a bigger place because you're moving by the power of your spirit in this house in Jesus' name. If you believe it, lift up a shout of praise. Come on, let's play it one more time. Those hands that can't stop praising his name. I'm, come on, praising his name. Praising his name. Sing it again. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Can't stop praising his name. Can't stop praising his name, Jesus. Now clap those hands and give Jesus praise all over this place tonight. Come on, he's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to tell you, I got one more song in my spirit before we go tonight. I feel like singing, look what the Lord has done. 
Has he touched anybody in the house tonight? Somebody shout, he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Are you ready to praise him one more time? You got one more praise in you tonight? Listen, I love you with all my heart. If I don't see you before Jesus comes, I'll see you in heaven. But I know this church is going to another level. Come on, let's give him all the praise for all he did this week. Can we sing it? Let's go. The Lord has done. Come on, lift it up. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Go ahead. He saved me. Go ahead. Somebody ought to run. Somebody ought to dance. Somebody ought to shout. Come on and praise him. Say, look what, what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Each day he's just the same. Come on, yeah. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. One more time and sing it again and look, look what, what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me just in Come on, give him a praise clap. Come on, give him a shout in the house tonight, amen. I tell you, this week, this week, I am so thankful for Pastor Ted and Pastor Carolyn. So thankful. I'm thankful for Tiffany and Alex, their team, part of some of their team. I mean, they have a bigger team than that, but just Tiffany and Alex is with them this week. It is amazing when you decide to step out in faith and say, we're gonna have a meeting. We're gonna to come together. A couple years ago, our very first meeting I had here, we've been here now nine years. It was a Saturday night, I'll never forget, we walked in. I'll never forget the guest speaker's wife said, where's all the people? Knowing that a lot of our people work at Washington, in Washington, D.C., and we had really, 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 did I say really? really low crowd that night. And if you're not careful, you can listen to the voice of the enemy. And the enemy say, they don't want it. You're wasting your time. But as I was praying over a year ago and came across a bald-headed preacher that was bringing forth the word, but not just bringing forth the word, bringing forth the anointing. Yeah. I walked in my wife's office and I said, do you think we could get them to come to our church? She said, I don't know. She said, I'll make the phone call. We made the phone call over a year ago and they were here a, uh, a year, almost a year. 
they were here. And as Pastor said, it was a divine appointment and an incredible relationship started. And I was so looking forward to having him here this year. In 26 years of ministry, I was telling my wife just the other day, I don't believe I've seen that many miracles every night take place. To God be the glory. Yeah. Amen. Woo. And, and I, I begin to think, you know what? It's, it all begins with the seed. It all begins with being obedient and saying, come on, let's do this. A seed. Worship team, you get in here. Some of you running from the parking lot because you're running late, coming straight from work this entire week. It was a seed that you were willing to place into the soil of this revival. That when the man and woman came and released a word, miracles took place because we were willing to put a seed. Never discount the seed. The seed is where the harvest comes from. So I just want to remind you and encourage you that whatever you're going through, maybe something you may be discouraged about, go back and do it again. Sow a seed and watch God meet the need. Watch God take it to a whole nother level. And I said something to our church over a year ago. I said, I really believe this first meeting with the Shuttlesworth is going to be a launching pad for encounter. And it was. Then I felt in my spirit and I told our church, listen, this week of meetings that's coming up, speaking about what's taking place this week. Not only are we going to get breakthrough signs and wonders and turnarounds, but I believe it's going to push us into another realm. And that's exactly what God has done. By the power of the Holy Ghost, He has pushed us into a whole other place. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for your ministry, your family. Thank you just for being you. They're the most genuine people, the most caring, loving people you will ever meet. I just, you come around me, I'm just going to keep bragging about them because they're incredible. The other day he left his Bible in my office. And I was bragging so much about Pastor Ted. My buddy up in Michigan, he said, take a picture of it and send it to me. He said, better yet, hide it and see if he's missing it. I said, look, I'm not going to steal the man of God's Bible and ruin the rest of the week of revival now. But that's how much we actually we think about them, is they're just incredible people. And um, thank God for connections. Thank God for um, you being here. Bible students, thank you for showing us the hunger. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, don't leave because the building behind us, we got some food for every, every student that's here. So before you get on the road and go back, we're going to feed you, fill you, place seeds in you, and then send you on your way. So don't leave. Make sure it's, it's the building right, right behind this building. Just go through those doors. There will be people there that will direct you. And um, thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for every volunteer, every nursery worker, every, every media person, usher, greeter. Thank you, church family members, from being here and getting here and taking this week. I'm telling you, it's a seed that as we planted it, God's brought it forth. And listen, this is not the end. This has just been the push. Come on, this is the push that God's taken us in a whole other realm. Amen? Father God, we just praise you and we thank you for this week. We thank you, Father, for Pastor Ted and Pastor Carolyn. Father, we thank you for miracle word. Father, we thank you for the church. We thank you for their ministry. Father, we thank you, God, that the best is yet to come. Father, we thank you for every Bible student that's here tonight. Father, we thank you for open doors favor and blessing. Father, I just ask, oh God, as they leave your house tonight, we thank you, Lord, that your angels go before us. Bless your people. And Lord, we're so thankful, so grateful of what you have done this week. God, we will never be the same 
in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you the praise for it. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you.